Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third. I'm Sandra Herrera, CBS Sports lead NWSL writer, joined today by my colleague and co-host Lisa Roman here today to chat about NWSL matches. We're going to be doing an NWSL weekend recap for everyone here today. Quick reminder, you can find us on Twitter at Attacking Third and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review all over those places, whether it's on Apple, Spotify, or Stitcher. That that stuff helps us out so, so much, and we always appreciate it. Lisa, how are you doing today? You ready to chat some NWSL? I am so ready. Ten teams played this weekend. We had five matches, um, some results. We have new standings we have to take a look at, too. Sandra, I'm doing, I'm, I'm having a good weekend. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic because you know what, Lisa? When the people in my life whom I care about thrive, I feed off of that energy. And girl, you're joining me today as somebody's fiance. So I just got to say congratulations on the podcast, putting it on record. Lisa, congratulations on your recent engagement. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra. It means a lot. Yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really excited. It's been a very packed weekend of soccer, Olympics, NWSL, and some celebrating with my fiance. Still not used to it, but you thank do. you. I love it. You'll love to hear it. Lisa Roman off the market, folks. Sorry. Shout out to my boy, Jimmy. You, you picked a good one. Uh, fantastic. Uh, but, you know, let's get into some of these games. Let's get into some of this soccer action. We have so many games to get through. All the teams were back. No bye weeks for anybody this week, Lisa. And to kick things off, uh, first match on Friday to kick off the weekend was Kansas City and North Carolina Courage. And we had some fun in our preview with some of these matches. We were like, you know what, let's let's put our picks on record. Let's, let's choose some teams, see what we want. And, uh, I don't know. And, we're going to go through if I remember correctly. You chose against all of my picks except I was gonna, until we got to the end of the schedule for this weekend. And we also chose, I like, remember we also chose like no draws, which is hilarious because this game ended in a scoreless draw zero, zero between Kansas city and North Carolina courage, no goals, both teams splitting the points, but I think the biggest takeaway from this match is that Kansas City came off of a bye week here, and they're now undefeated in this this next portion of the schedule for themselves. They didn't concede, they didn't lose, uh, they got a point out of this, and I think a bigger thing, Lisa, is that that big trade that we had to talk about prior to this match, it was just days before these two teams went head-to-head big news on a Wednesday. And then all of a sudden these two teams going head to head on a Friday and players like Amy Rodriguez, Kristen Hamilton, Haley Mace making appearances and featuring in this match, Hamilton and Rodriguez were tasked with starts in this game. What were some of your takeaways from the scoreless draw? Uh, I was surprised to see these starts and I'm not going to lie. These players had just arrived at their new clubs and their new coaches that they don't know their new teammates that they don't know and haven't played with um, are now they just have to slot in and and pick up, try to mesh, try to go with that. I mean, if you take a look at this league and, and this team and this season, Kansas City as a club um, is new-ish. Yeah, they're new to Kansas City and they're still getting allocated together. You take a look at Louisville. They've had games under their belt throughout this regular season, the 2021 Challenge Cup, and they're still getting acclimated with each other, still meshing together because as a new team, that's why you have preseason. That's why you have lead up games. You need to mesh. So to ask players like Haley, or excuse me, like Kristen Hamilton and Amy Rodriguez to just start in these games, that's that's crazy, especially because they're going against their opponents. So there's so many pros and cons that go into this. Um, and there was also some news that broke right before this Kansas City, North Carolina game. There was a bit of a COVID outbreak. So there are some players um, not available for this game on both sides of it. So that left North Carolina with only four substitutes. Um, that's really, that's not a lot. That is not a lot of substitutes. So it makes sense that Amy Rodriguez got the start for the courage because they needed players. Um, and then as this game got underway and Kristen Hamilton was in her red Jersey and those teal tights, you could tell that she was going up against her friends and her former teammates. 
players that she knew so well. It, it worked for her. She had a great, great match. Um, and then in North Carolina, one of those players not being available to play Jess McDonald, which I think made a bit of a difference for this North Carolina team um, and the looks that they were hoping to get from an Amy Rodriguez and that Jess McDonald combination play. So they had to figure that figure that out and step in there. Um, another player for Casey that was out was Lola Bonta, who is a big midfield presence for Kansas city. And she wasn't in there. Um, but Kansas city, you mentioned it, they got a draw. They got one point. They took two points off of North Carolina. We're looking for the positives here for this Casey team. And they played well, they looked dangerous. They had different attacking force and attacking them momentum up top. And I think that lends a hand to Kristen Hamilton. We even saw Haley Mace involved in that trade, stepping into this game in the second half. And she caused trouble for her former team and their back line. And there's a huge advantage for players like Hamilton and Mace who know the defending line of North Carolina so well. And they know the goalkeepers um, after the game. If, if you guys stuck around during the broadcast and, and watched it, they were just hugging their old yeah. teammates. It Ugh. was like pretty sad. It's like yeah. when you leave camp at the end of the summer and you have all your best friends that you just have to leave now. Um, but then you get to like see them right away. It, it must've been weird for those players. Very odd for them. Um, Sandra, when you saw the starting lineups and, and them sliding in, and then as you watched the game progress, what were your initial thoughts and how, or if did they change throughout the match? Yeah. My, my biggest thing was like, Holy crap that Rodriguez and, and Hamilton were going to, we're going to be getting these starts just a couple days. Like that's not a lot of time to get acclimated to anything <laughs> to your new club, whether it's, it's teammates, coaching staffs, uh, tactics, you know, um, formations, any type of team culture related things, um, you know, but Amy Rodriguez is a player who's been, who's been a pro across multiple leagues throughout her career, uh, has familiarity with, with Paul Riley in playing with Philadelphia when they had a team back in, back in their WPS. So it just, uh, there were these small ties there, you know, but then having somebody like Kristen Hamilton be tasked with that star really just kind of throwing all caution to the wind, but a lot of it was, also circumstance based, like you mentioned with, with a, the heavy injury report for Kansas city, which is, is not new. Uh, they've been having to deal with that a lot this year, but I also noticed, um, you know, somebody like a, a Kristen Edmonds, you know, slotting in a little bit deeper into that back lines, going from outside back, slotting into center back for Kansas city. And I thought she also had a really, really good game in this match, uh, for, for Kansas city. Uh, she looked at like at labor at one point, a little bit in the game, kind of maybe picked something up and had to be subbed out, but watching her just sort of play where she was playing at center back, really good positioning. And honestly, just like great leadership skills for the, for this team right now, which is something that they're really going to need just moving forward, not having somebody like Labanta available on the pitch. She is someone who does bring that for this team, someone who will absolutely sort of get everybody in check and kind of pull the, do you know, pull the puppies by the scruff of the collar and like mm -hmm. tell them let's go. And she wasn't available, you know, for this match. So that kind of, you could see in the body language that it kind of fell to somebody um, like Edmonds and, and Hugh Williams has been high on Edmonds for a while. He was a player that he specifically yeah. made a trade for with Orlando uh, ahead of the season. And he had uh, equally good things to say about her in this post-game match um, when I kind of dipped my head into some of the media availability there. So he had high remarks for her. Um, no real update on, on the knock there at this moment, but he's, he's, he was happy with the performance from the team overall, having not sort of having that fight and having the resiliency to not sort of concede or, or let all of the points go basically. Um, and so there's just small, very small silver linings, things that they're going to pick up on in this match, uh, and maybe hopefully try to motivate them and carry on. So North Carolina, yeah. I don't know. I think maybe they're on a, they're on a little bit of a skid. They're, they're, they haven't had a win in, in the last few weeks. So, so we'll see what a move like this does. You know, maybe it's a different look if they've got more players available. This is the team that is used to uh, having players come off the bench and make an impact. And unfortunately that just wasn't part of their arsenal um, this week. So I think they also feel sort of lucky to be coming away with a point in this one as well. Yeah. I, I just want to jump in and, and try to comment on you talking about one of a really big playmakers in this game for Kansas city, Kristen Edmonds. I mean, you gave her a lot of 
a good praise that she definitely deserves and her great positioning. She saved a ball essentially yeah. off the line for Casey um, and her leadership and her ability to do that. I mean, we've seen so many goal own goals this this year and this season. And a lot of times it comes when there's a lot of pressure on you, but sliding into that center back position, it's a very different role to play because you are also covering for your goalkeeper. And in that instance, it was Carly Nelson. She came off her line and she was a bit out of position on that play. She wasn't able to grab it. So Edmonds dropped in right off the line. And as the shot came in, a lot of defenders will try to swing and kick that ball out one time. Edmonds did not do that. This is where her maturity and her intelligence of the game was so evident for me. She let the ball hit her body, almost like back when you're U5 and you learn the bunny trap where you just let the ball hit your legs. You don't try to trap it with one foot because God forbid something happened. You're the last line of defense. She let the ball hit her body, let it bounce to the ground and then cleared it out high and wide. That just from what we've seen this year in own goals and in the NWSL, anything can happen. And the fact that yeah. she took no chances on that job and she saved that ball off the line. And that was honestly probably one of the best opportunities for North Carolina. Um, North Carolina probably should have scored that. If I'm looking at it the other way, they yeah. had wide open goal. I believe it was Smith who had that shot, but incredible job by Edmonds. And I really think that Casey had a more spark and more rhythm than we've seen from them throughout this regular season and the bye week helped them and Kiki Pickett getting her first start. And she was making a big impact down the flank of the field and the front line for Kansas city with Jenkins, Hamilton, Vasconcelos up there. They did well. They, they moved in and around each other. And maybe that was the spark that Hamilton provided getting the start against her old club and, and providing a different look and a different fire for Kansas city. It was a really fun game, really fun game to watch. Yeah, I think people look at the scoreline and maybe they can get caught up in that and see a 0-0 scoreline and say what what was even happening in this game, if, if anything. But, you know, if you've been paying attention to the league and you've been paying attention to these two teams in particular, two teams with completely different cultures, two different histories, absolutely. But coming head to head on this day and then ending out in a 0-0 draw, there's definitely things um, to go through. And uh, they're both each probably going to take silver linings out of this one. But I liked what I saw more out of K uh, Kansas City on this day, for sure. Um, let's look ahead a little bit. Uh, we're going into Saturday now. Uh, these two doubleheader games that we've got to go. We have Orlando Pride versus OL Reign and then Houston Dash versus Portland Thorns. Uh, you know, a couple of uh, interesting games here. We're going to keep going and reminding people of our picks and taking a look here. I think in this Orlando Pride versus Ola Rain. I believe I had the rain in this one, if I remember correctly, Lisa, because you had the pride in this one. Yeah, I had the pride. I Well, I don't want to talk about it, Sandra. All right, we won't talk about it. Let's talk about <laughs> just the game because, again, with the news breaking before <laughs> before we get a chance to, to preview these uh, types of matches, some a little bit of news for Orlando going into this match. Their head coach, Mark Skinner, stepped down, uh, stepped away from the team. There has been some recent headlines, some recent news, some rumors, nothing official yet, saying uh, that he's currently going to be tied to uh, Manchester United women overseas. Uh, so nothing has been official there, but him agreeing to step down in light of all these things sort of surfacing, uh, maybe the writing is just sort of there on the wall for everyone, uh, but kind of catching a lot of uh, us off guard. I'm sure the team as well. Um, in the meantime, uh, after this match where they lost two to zero to the rain, uh, they did announce that uh, Becky Burley is the interim head coach. She's the uh, infamously known as the University of Florida uh, soccer coach there. So go Gators for all you Gators mm -hmm. out there. Um, so she'll be the, the interim for now. A lot of history there. But in, in this match, uh, they had to go up against an OL rain side with all of this stuff kind of swirling <laughs> around the team uh, couldn't be easy on top of kind of going on this bit of a streak where they've been winless in their last four games, you know, a team that was coming off of such a hot streak to start the regular season, Lisa. I mean, it almost sort of feels like they were really kind of going against the tide here that maybe this was a game where they could have continued and got back some of that uh, momentum where they had really early in the season, but it just didn't pan out that way because 
Oh, well, Rain ended up sort of dictating things really, really early in this game with an early goal in the 10th minute from Jessica Fishlock. And then later on, Ciara King went ahead and got the go-ahead goal in the 51st minute, and uh, they walked away with the win on this one. Did you have any big takeaways from this particular match? Ziara King. Yeah, absolutely. I love that she's getting more regular she starts. She played light out. She deserves it. She deserves it. Um, I was, I was like a little interested that Bethany Balser wasn't in the starting lineup just because she's been on a hot streak. She has been scoring goals. Um, but King is just playing out of her skin. It's fun. She looks like she's just smiling and having such a great time every time she's on the field. And she had the assist for Fishlock's goal. Um, and it was her defensive side of the ball that did so well. Um, it's actually watching our last game of the weekend that just finished on Sunday evening. I, I had the same theme watching all of these games that when the forwards in the NWSL defend, they get behind the ball, they put in work off the ball defensively, high pressure just to try to win the ball back. Even if it's just three steps, it makes a difference in this league. And Kings, Yar King did that throughout this game against Orlando. Every time she lost the ball, she was putting Allie Krieger under so much pressure and it paid off. Um, she was able to pick off the ball at first and, and then play a beautiful pass into Jess Fishlock. And Oh my goodness, that turn by Jess Fishlock, like, that's fun. That's so fun to watch. She just turned on a heel and a beautiful strike. Um, really early in this game, um, there was a mispass, miss happening in the back, and Ashlyn Harris went to pick up the ball. That was a pass back from Phoebe McLernan looking to play it out. And O.L. Rain had a indirect kick from right inside the box. And indirect kicks are obviously harder to make than direct kicks. However, Ashlyn Harris made a big save and Ashlyn Harris is also a theme of this team and this game, <laughs> which not surprising. There was a penalty kick and not surprising. Ashlyn Harris saved it. Um, so impressive. That's five straight penalty are you saves kidding me? for Harris. So dope. So dope. I love that. Yeah. Like that's so fun. She keeps this Orlando pride team in games. This easily could have been three or four, nothing against Orlando, but Ashlyn Harris kept them in this match. Um, but OL rain really came out on the front foot. They were imposing their game on the pride. They were working harder. They, they had that, those forwards that were defending that did well. Um, at halftime, it was one nil towards the rain and going into halftime, they needed another goal. Rain needed another one to put it away because Sydney LaRue, when she gets going, she can put so much pressure on an opponent's back line. And she did in that second half, Sid LaRue put pressure on, she got into the attack. Um, Eric Tim, Rack started getting looks in. And if that happens and Sydney Laro gets a good enough look, it's going to find the back of the net. Lucky for OL Rain, they were able to get another one. I, they could have had three with the PK, but uh, they were able to get another one um, with Ziara King and a goal and an assist for her ending this match was huge with huge Harris ending this game. I'm looking at some stats with nine saves. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And one of them is a penalty kick. Um, but Orlando stat wise had zero shots on target. Yeah. Zero. That's not, that's not good enough. And yes, things were happening off the pitch with Mark Skinner. Um, heads up NWSL fans. That's the second time a head coach has stepped down on game day <laughs> or before a game, right yeah. before a game uh, this season. So yeah, stay tuned on Fridays because news drops in the NWSL <laughs> and you've got to be ready for it. <laughs> No matter what else is happening, you've got to be ready for it. Oh, good. Yeah, we, we're trying our best here. We're trying our best to keep up with it. It's not it's not easy with the Olympics going in for sure. But uh, I thought, you know, again, this is another game. Even if you're on the losing side of this, uh, if you're Orlando, there are still some things to maybe take away from it. Um, obviously, Ashton Harris is lights off for this team right now. She's doing a lot of great stuff in goal. Sydney LaRue wasn't on the scoreline, but we see who she is for this team kind of week in and week out. She's been relentless on that attacking line for this team. And I really liked uh, seeing uh, Vigiano getting back out on the pitch for the team. I know I said it in the preview and I was watching her a little bit in this game against the rain and they've needed a little bit of an extra boost in that midfield there. And I think she helps provide that for them. So it was good to sort of get her 
seeing her get out there to get more extended minutes with this team. And hopefully that's maybe going to change some things with this team. Now that they do maybe have somebody like a, a Becky Burley in place, even though it is just interim for now, it's still a central figure that they can point to in the locker room that she can maybe sort of be a person that this team can like continue to sort of rebuild and sort of wipe this little slate where this weird sort of run that they've been on where they've been winless in these last several games and just sort of maybe look ahead. So uh, we'll see what happens for the pride. Uh, next week, big win for the rain. I know that they were disappointed in that uh, that three one loss against Chicago last week, um, and it was very very telling. I think to see how how passionate this team is to want to ensure that they're getting these winning results, even even though they're a team that's still waiting for for their head coach to to come on back and Laura Harvey from the Olympics. So uh, Fishlock and King in post game, you know, being very again very uh, colorful once again in the post game saying that like even though it was a win, there were still a lot of great stuff in there that they can work on and go back and take a look at so um, we'll see if this is the type of win that can maybe kind of boost uh, the rain up for for this next half of the season and then to sort of close out this uh this double header we had houston dash and portland thorns uh and again another game with the scoreline when you're like okay like maybe what happened here because it was a narrow one very narrow scoreline one zero portland thorns walk away with the, the win and not only do they walk away with the win they walk away with the win from Sophia Smith, who scored the lone goal in this game in the first minute of the game. Ridiculous. I, I just, the Thorns are absolutely becoming this kind of team that attacks you in waves, pads up the, the, the shot total, and is walking away with these like narrow score lights but they're wins. So they'll take them, I guess. Uh, and this one has kind of given them some cushion in the standing a little bit. And we'll, you know, close out the show with that. But uh, I, I got to say, like, if you're Houston, there's got to be some moments in this game where you're going to look back on when you're rolling back the footage and you're like, gosh, really should have had this one. Uh, not just the first minute, Sandra, 30 sec no, 32 God. seconds in the fastest goal in Portland Thorns history. Um, so Sophia Smith making history there yeah, in, yeah. in the Thorns jersey, which is so great and fun to see. It's the forwards putting pressure on their opponent's defense. It's Simone Charlie. She, the ball's kind of bounced around a little bit on this goal happening. I mean, I was still like walking around, not watching the game yet because it had just started. And before I know it, I, I pick my head up and Simone Charlie is picking off the ball. She plays it to a teammate who gets it right into Sophia Smith, who just dances around three Houston defenders. Uh, Im so impressive by her. She does get a lucky bounce in there. If you watch it back, watch the goal back. Um, but it, it doesn't matter. She was in the right place, the right time just sheds these three orange defenders off of her for <laughs> Houston. It's so impressively. And then just slots it away. She does chip the ball at the end of falling goals like falling backwards as she chips this one towards the back of the net, but Simone Charlie doing the great defending and the forwards in this league are making a difference when they defend um, Houston. This is probably a really tough game for them to watch back uh, leaving that pitch heads low because it was rough for them. Um, and they could have, they had chances and they could have put it away. They had good moments, really good moments. And the teams that, that, it, what the separation that happens with the teens at the top of the standings and really, really good teams are the small marginal differences and capitalizing on goal scoring opportunities, whether they come in the 32nd second or in the 90th plus minute of this game, that's what needs to happen. And Portland did that and Houston didn't. Dash just didn't have enough runners into the box. Their midfield unit wasn't getting forward enough. They were sitting back. I think they were a little intimidated by Portland's midfield, which is pretty intimidating midfield. However, when you get the ball and you're moving down in transition, you have to get runners up. You have to get people into the box. So when a cross comes in, it's not just easily cleared out by your opponents. Um, I also think Bella Bigsby for Portland, she had a really good game. Uh, it's fun to watch for sure. Her um, And we talked about in the preview, Sandra, Spencer, Jasmine Spencer for Houston. She's looking to find her footing. She had a good game, but not clinical enough. I mean, I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but she had a good, good game in the second half. She was pushing. She was getting she a real solid chance late in the game it was a near open net far post and just missed it. And you could see on her face, the agony in that one. How yeah, bad you have to put that away. You have to put that away. 
Yeah, yeah it could and have that been, hurt it her. Could be, we could be talking about this game a little bit differently, you know, if you're splitting splitting the points, if you're you're Houston. Um, table is narrow, so maybe this is going to be one of those games where they go back and maybe circle and be like, oh, this game right here, tough. Um, and also, honestly, as, a, as the the season continues, like when they're looking at maybe the with the table this narrow, like when teams are looking back and seeing the head-to-head goal differential, those little baby kind of tiebreakers that come into play, the tiebreakers that might come down to those final few weeks that matter. You know, this might be one of those games where it's like, ugh, you oh. just kind of maybe had it back and put it away. Uh, but I've been enjoying like these two teams in particular when they go head-to-head. After um, after that 2020 Challenge Cup quarterfinal, it's like it hit like a, a, a new, like a reset button on like the rivalries within this league. There's There's been some really good matchups between Portland and between Houston. And they always sort of uh, have been leaving a little bit left more like to desire. So I, this was another one of those games for me because it definitely was like, two teams kind of trying to show off their depth a little bit during this Olympic portion of the schedule. And I think we saw that um, in this match in particular. So a lot of chances for, for both these teams, but uh, one zero in favor of the thorns and uh, believe it or not, there are still two more games that we've got to recap for everybody here, Lisa. But first I think it's important to hydrate as always. And we got to take a quick break. And just like that, we're going to be back. On Sunday, here we are to cover these final two games, a doubleheader to close out NWSL weekend, Gotham FC versus Chicago, and then racing Louisville FC versus Washington Spirit. Gotham defeats Chicago 2-1. Uh, feels a little bit closer, I think, in the scoreline than it might have in the game. Uh, very interesting one. I think in that it's maybe a little bit of a tale of two halves for really both these teams. Um, you had Gotham really putting some things together in that first half and then finally getting the payoff uh, right before halftime is Allie Long breaks through on goal in uh, first half stoppage time. And then the second half, Chicago tried to, to sort of get Gotham on their heels in a little bit, but they just weren't able to capitalize and the finishing in the final third. And then the game quickly went in the sw- uh, swung in the way of uh, a Gotham's favor with a penalty kick for Mitch Purse when she converted that in the 70th minute. And then some adjustments for Chicago led to a very, very late game uh, goal for them to get one back in a 90 minute stoppage time for Mackenzie Doniak to sort of kind of give them something to hang their hat on perhaps coming out of this one. Um, but a lot of different moments in this game. Again, when we're talking about games to look at it, maybe circle talking about those little head to heads, those little goal differentials, those tiebreakers. This is one of those where they're maybe going to Chicago's going to look back and say like, what are maybe some things that we could have done different here? Um, because there were some very interesting moments uh, throughout, <laughs> throughout the match where maybe it kind of dictated a little bit of the tempo and a little of the flow of the game. Uh, what were some of your impressions of this uh, match, Lisa? We knew this was going to be tight. Um, Chicago winning their last three games coming into this one. Gotham undefeated in their last six games. This was a good one, and this was a really good matchup. Um, we saw different looks from Chicago and from Gotham. I think that th- I'll start with Chicago, the front runners. We had Pew, we had Watt, we had Hill for Chicago, putting on a lot of pressure on Gotham's back line and Gotham is good under pressure. They know what they're doing. They can pass out of it, but I think the combination of the speed and the defensive organization and, and the pressure from Pew Watt and Hill was really impressive and really good to see. And we say this every week, but Mallory Pew is getting better every single game. Every minute she plays on the field, she does not take it for granted and she gets better with that. Um, with her injuries, we could have seen setbacks and we could have seen pressure under her, but she is growing with this Chicago team. And I think playing alongside players like Watt and and Hill, but mostly Watt, they have a good relationship and a a good relationship off the field. You can tell a good relationship on the field and how they make their runs, how they can dictate and tell where their teammate is going before they start to make that run. Their understanding of one another is so deep and so connected. And that's what makes them really good. The, the best players can know where their teammate is going to go before they even go there. Um, and I think Cassie Miller in goal for Chicago had some big saves and came up big in this game. Um, 
for Gotham, yes, they got a goal before halftime heading into it, thanks to Allie Long. However, their possession in the first half was big. They had a lot of possession. They had chances, but not good enough chances. Nothing clear enough that said, okay, we're in this game and we are putting up we're putting Chicago on their heels. We're on the front foot, which Freya Coombe, head coach for Gotham, loves. She loves to come out on the front foot. She loves to move quickly in transition. And Gotham was possessing a lot. And to have a team that can do both, go route one, be quick in transition, use the speed you have up top with Onomano and Purse, and then can also say, hey, our opponents are sitting back in a deeper line. We need to possess. We need to move them around. We need to look for those perfect chances and not just go direct every time. And we saw a Gotham team that was possessing, but they weren't possessing with a purpose in the first half. They weren't looking to get to goal. They weren't looking to move forward. Um, and you mentioned that goal from Ali Long, 45th plus minute at the end of the very first half, Chicago was playing down a player at that per- point. Heath heat was a very, very big fast factor in the Sunday matches. Um, we saw it in Chicago uh, Tata Malazzo, she had to come off towards the end of that first half and a good decision by Rory Dames to not sub anyone else yet because Malazzo is a great player. You want her back out there in the second 45 if you can. Um, but at that point, it was numbers up opportunity for Gotham and they were finally able to capitalize. Of course, the cross coming in from Caprice Didasco. What else is new? She's so good at that. She actually cuts it back onto her left foot as she sends this in. And her third assist of the season, I believe, from essentially the same type of play, corner kick. She's really good at those services balls into the box. And Allie Long with the goal, and it was a good goal. It was a great, great goal for Allie Long. Um, but four shots for Gotham in that first half. And then the second half, like you mentioned, Chicago made some changes, made some changes. I'm not surprised Rory Danes, he knows what he's doing with the clipboard. He definitely does. Um, Cola Prico stepping in. He made a lot of subs at half, which is surprising, but again, the heat, there's a lot going on and Chicago needs to win this game. Um, Cola Prico stepping in and she played the sixth position, which pushed Morgan Gattrall higher up the field. And when Morgan Gattrall gets higher up the field and she can be in the attacking end and contributing with the front runners of Pew Hill and Watt, it makes for better offense for Chicago's side. Um, when you saw those changes, Sandra, in the second half, were you surprised? Were you expecting? What were you were you looking for when you saw those players come in? I wasn't, I wasn't too surprised by the initial substitution for Tatum Malazzo because she had Really, you, we all saw on the, on the feed there that she had started to feel it a little bit uh, right before the second half. And it looked like she had been sort of trying to play through some of the look like a little bit of that the heat exhaustion a little bit um, and trying to breathe through it. And uh, it was tough. I mean, it's unfortunate, quite frankly, that kind of playing against the element a little bit. And we saw on that goal, it ended up being a great goal from, from Ali Long, but you know, a huge part of that is this team is playing down a man. And when you're looking back on the replay of that goal, you have uh, a defender, Kayla Sharples, who's ultimately tasked with trying to defend two Gotham players. And it's like, who are you picking purse or yeah. long on this service in? And it's equally frustrating as you're looking back on that team, you see a, a couple other Red Stars defenders, while the ball is in play, calling for an offside flag. And it's like, you can't do that in this league, man. <laughs> and look what ended up happening. They ended up going down a goal uh, into, into, the sec- into the second half. So I wasn't too surprised at, at seeing the substitution if it was going to be due to like an illness, uh, you know, from the elements there. Um, but having somebody like Bianca St. George's come in was probably on paper going to be the next logical choice in terms of having an outside back uh, to, to pick and come off the bench. The downside of that is that she's a player that is working her way back into form with this team. And she had a little bit of trouble, uh, in this second half, kind of getting reacquainted, getting readjusted to NWSL match day minutes. Uh, we saw her pick up a yellow right away, ended up, uh, you know, down the line, there, kind of giving up a, uh, a penalty with a lot of physical presence in the box on Mitch purse. I mean, it's a tough call to make. We saw in the feed it was a little bit delayed, but it was a call that was made. And uh, Purse had the presence of mind to step on up and just take it herself, and it put the team ahead. Um, so it's a, it's a tough place to be in, I think, when Chicago is also a team that's 
like any other team in this league right now, sort of having to show off their depth, their squads a little bit during this Olympic stretch, maybe dealing with some injuries. But coming into this game, they had a pretty clean injury sheet coming into this match with just their international players uh, listed as out for Olympic duty. So uh, having a quick yellow on that one, the best sub I think of the match was having somebody like Holder Prico be able to come in and mm -hmm. have that impact in the team. We saw it uh, last week against OL Reign, the immediate impact. And we saw, we sort of saw that again during uh, halftime when Chicago probably in the opening 15 minutes of that second half really had all of the momentum, but didn't have any of the goals. And it ended up uh, biting them just uh, about, you know, 10 minutes or so later when they conceded the, the penalty kick. It's, it's one thing to try to chase a game. If you're down one zero, it's another to try to chase it in the final 20 minutes when you're down two goals. So uh, it was unfortunate. And uh, eventually St. George's picked up another foul. She's uh, she's two for two in her appearances this year in, in the NWSL regular season. Uh, hey, at both least she's consistent. Hey, both her appearances now ending in the uh, red cards. Uh, so so we'll see what, what happens there. And uh, I think ultimately Chicago probably just going to hang their hat on the fact that they were able to pull one back ultimately with their substitutions coming in and kind of changing up the game a little bit. Um, these are those games where you're going to try to say like it, it could go either way. It's really even when we previewed it, we said it was going to be a pretty close game. Um, but again, this is another one of the, those games similar to Houston and Portland where I'm looking at Chicago and Gotham. Like these are two of those teams when they go head to head, like people are maybe going to want to pay attention to uh, something about the rebrand out there for this East Coast team um, doing something different. I think uh, maybe kind of building up a new little bit of rivalry there in itself. So uh, I thought it was a great game uh, to get a better look at both of these teams in the depth of their squad and uh, Gotham's walking away with all three points on this one. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, I'll give credit where credit's due. You know, I had the rain, you did, you know, against Orlando, you didn't want to talk about it then. I'll just say, I don't want to talk about this one either, but you had Gotham <laughs> and this one, this one goes to you, Lisa, this one goes to you. Okay. Yay. I love being a winner. <laughs> well, let's say, let's, let's wrap it up with this final, final game because we had picked against each other throughout all of these games. And of course, in this final game, we both went with racing Louisville FC. And alas, they did not pull through for us. Uh, Louisville versus Washington Spirit. Washington Spirit end up picking up the win in this one. 2-0 uh, on the road against Louisville. Goals from Ashley Hatch. Goals from <laughs> Sam Stop. Again, another game with a very early goal. Ashley Hatch connecting on the board for the Spirit in the fifth minute. Ashley Hatch, what a season she's having, Lisa. Ashley Hatch, holy cannoli, she is doing great. It's so fun. Um, you also mentioned Sam Stubb getting a goal in this one. A uh, reminder to those who didn't listen to our preview, Sam Stubb got a red card last week against Gotham. That red card was rescinded. She was able to start. So Washington played last week like 80 minutes 10 players against 11. So Sam Staub got that red card rescinded. She's able to start. And it's a good thing because she got the goal, the, the insurance goal for Washington throughout this game. But um, just, just a reminder for everyone, listen to our previews. Sometimes, sometimes we'll give you good information before you head into these games. Uh, but Ashley Hatch goals, goals, goals on the season, her sixth goal. She now leads the league. She's on fire. Um, yeah, so the theme of this episode is forwards defending in the NWSL. It really works. Ashley Sanchez started this play and this ability for Washington to go ahead so early in this game. She's defending. Um, Richie Burke for Washington calls Sanchez and Rodman the divas of the team. And, and he says they don't really like to defend and do all this, but they work so hard. And Ashley Sanchez, her uh, work rate off the ball is tremendous when she gets the ball she's unstoppable she dribbles, dribbles th through players she can take players on 1v1 she has great vision of the field to connect with her teammates but when she loses the ball and she defends it, it works so well she won this ball back for Washington Spirit which allowed the transition play to happen and ultimately Hatch gets the goal but it starts with Sanchez getting back behind the ball putting pressure on Louisville and then winning this one back. Um, I think racing played pretty well in this game, despite going up against a Washington team. I mean, not great. Obviously they didn't get the win, but they had moments of, 
really good possession and really good movement of the ball that we we've seen from Washington or we've seen from Louisville, but it hasn't been consistent. I think it was more consistent today against a Washington team. However, not converting, not finishing in the final third. It wasn't good enough. They had really good looks though. Um, remember they're going up against Audrey, Aubrey Bledsoe of the Washington spirit. Who's really good. She's really good. She kept this score line at zero. She got a clean sheet tonight, which was great for her four saves in the first half. Like she needed yellow. That. Yeah. <laughs> very clever. Very <laughs> clever. <laughs> it, it happens. It happens. Yeah, and and that's, that's how it goes. And then to get a Sam stop to get that second goal in the second half um, w- was really good to see her at off a set piece opportunity off a corner. Um, good. It was good stuff from Washington spirit there. They're on the up and up. This was your dark horse team, Sandra, and they're dark horsing it up the standings. <laughs> hey, I didn't have them picked in this game, but I, I love that they're still doing uh, so well, but absolutely in agreement with you. I, I loved um, seeing Nadia Nadeeb make her debut for yeah, yeah. The racing finally. And of course, like immediately delivering the show, uh, the fans were very excited to see her and uh, almost uh, caused some trouble there in, in the final third. Uh, Bledsoe was trying to make a clearance and bounced off of Nadine, but nothing sort of came off of that. And um, starting to see some more uh, Shayna uh, Matthews coming on into the match, uh, being able to participate a little bit more in these games uh, for, for Louisville. So there's some good things there. And, and despite the scoreline, you got to look at maybe some of the individual performances when it's a loss. Uh, but Louisville's got some um, some really fun players on their team. Uh, Emily, uh, Emily Fox having another great game uh, with this team. Uh, she's been having a really good year with them, period. The rookie now drafted number one uh, overall for them. So a lot of good pieces there, just weren't able to pick up this win. Um, not consistent for Louisville. So, so we'll see what happens for them uh, in the weeks coming up. And of course, hit me. Sandra, we can't forget Lauren Malay had a flip throw. People love shenanigans. <laughs> people I love, love shenanigans. People love <laughs> showstoppers. Uh, and you know what? Who doesn't love a, a flip throw in? Uh, there's it again, was you gotta... so casual. It was so casual. I was like, oh, throw in, whatever, what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden she's upside down and the ball is going <laughs> like 30 yards. I was like, this is great. This is what I love. Oh, I love it. I love it. The game got pushed back from the heat. Yeah. Everyone was feeling themselves. The shenanigans were out and we saw it from Malay. It was fun. It's all, it's uh, it's the little things that you, again, that you got to go back and look at and sort of uh, take as silver linings in this one. So uh, there was, there was enough there, I think for the world to, to sort of look at some individual performances and, and maybe try to build off of into, into next week. So we'll see how they respond uh, from a loss like this, but of course, a uh, win for Washington continued to, sort of shake up the standings. They're still kind of narrow, but we've got with some of the results over this weekend, there's been a little space now between one and maybe six. <laughs> Whereas before it really was just like three points separating one from the other six teams um, in the league. So let's take a quick gander at all of these standings for everybody. So you know what we're looking at moving into next week. Portland Thorns still hang on to number one with 22 points. Uh, Gotham FC with their win jumps them up into the second place standings with 19 points. The win for Washington Spirit bumps them up to third place with 18 points. Uh, Chicago's loss leaves them with 17 points at fourth place. Fifth place for North Carolina Courage also with 17 points. Again, those tiebreakers coming into play head to head. Sixth place, Houston Dash uh, with 16 points. Orlando Pride have now dropped to seventh place with 16 points. Oh, Rain with 13. Racing Louisville in ninth place with 11. And bottom of the table is Kansas City NWSL with four points. So we will see how these standings continue to shake out, Lisa. Uh, the league has been, quite frankly, at this point, I think it's safe to say probably one of the most competitive uh, seasons to date, for sure. It really has. And you look at goal differential, (laughs) Portland right now is 10, their goal differential. So that's huge for them. That comes down to it at the end of this. um, I mean, in any season or tournament, I mean, you take a look at the Olympics, it's going to come down to goal differential. So teams that can get goals and not just wins, but also big wins, it'll help them when these points come down. And it's just so marginal at, at the end of this, but 
we're getting there. We're, we're in the second half. We're getting to the stretch where every point counts and every game matters. And if you can get a late goal in a match and just close that goal differential gap, like we saw in that Chicago game, that's really big for them moving forward. Um, but yeah, these standings are tight. Portland's still at the top. Um, but otherwise it's spaced out a little bit, but they're still tight towards the top of this one. Any, any given game and any given week, another team can just leapfrog over and get up there. It's, this is a good one. It's a good season, Sandra, we have ahead of us. Yes. And we'll, and we'll be with everybody every step of the way, Lisa here on attacking third. I want to thank everybody for listening as always, just a quick reminder to follow us on Twitter at attacking third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your podcast. We're also available as YouTube. So please subscribe to us on YouTube. Just visit youtube.com slash attacking third. And we'll be back very soon. We've got an Olympic game coming up Tuesday. We're going to get hit you with some more Olympic coverage. So stay tuned for Sandra Reda and Lisa Roman. This was attacking third. Yeah.